Hi guys, after some considerable deliberation and looking at the different options available, I eventually took the plunge and bought a deeper Chirp Plus 2. I'm not going to get into the debate of whether fish finders are good, bad or indifferent for carp fishing. In this review, I'm simply going to look at charging the unit, well, what you get in the box, charging the unit, connecting it to your rod, casting it out, doing some maps, hopefully finding some fish and general good, bad, indifferent points of using the deeper. So what's in the box? We have the deeper itself. We have uh, a night cover that is an alternate cover to the one that's in the uh, olive green drab. We have a charging lead. We have two little eye connections that go that screw into the deeper itself and we have a little sponge carry bag and some instructions so how do you charge the deeper well quite simply unscrew the unit and inside there is a little connection point where you can connect the supplied USB-C connector. According to the instruction booklet, when it's charging, the, there's a little light here that will blink, and it blinks at different rates, blinks once, blinks twice, blinks three times, blinks four times, or is a solid green. And the different blinking rates are a simple indication of the level of charge. When it goes solid green, it's fully charged. And according to the manual, it takes about 45 minutes to uh, do a full charge on the, uh, on the deeper. Once you've charged the deeper, you need to screw the lid back on and you need to ensure that the, the arrows line up fully to ensure that you've got full waterproofing off the deeper. Once I've got the unit fully charged, I'm gonna head down to my local Syndicate Lake and do the next part of this review, which will be to cast it out on the water and give it a try in the real environment. Catch you at the lake. So I've arrived at my local syndicate lake to give the deeper its first outing. The first thing to do is connect it. So I've tied uh, a link onto uh, some braid and then simply Connect the link to the little eye on the uh, that's screwed into the deeper. So this is the swim that I'm going to map out today. Do a bit of bathymetric scanning, see if we can find some fish, and just get a general feeling for the contours on the bottom of this part of the lake. Setting up the deeper is quite simple. Drop the deeper into the water near where you're going to do your scan and then go into the settings on your phone, go to Wi-Fi and on mine it's automatically found the deeper chirp plus two. So that's it now connected on Wi-Fi. Go into the, the deeper app and you will see that it's showing connected in the green bit on the, uh, on the screen. Little tip, if you keep the rod tip low whilst you're retrieving the deeper, the deeper retrieves quite smoothly, it doesn't bounce around on the water. Whereas if you have your rod tip high, the deeper has a tendency to bounce around and then that could disturb your, your scan and not get as clear a scan as possible. Lesson number one. I think it's advisable to use a wire trace, especially if you're using the deeper on waters that hold pike or other predators. Just had a, uh, a pike have a good old go at the deeper. It didn't take it, but I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a couple of battle scars on it now. I had to give it a good tug to get it back. So I'm now going to put a wire trace on it 
and then carry on the scans. My setup for casting the deeper is quite simple. I've got a three pound test curve carp rod, a bait runner reel loaded with braid and as I mentioned earlier I've now put a wire trace onto the end of a link connected directly to the deeper. So we're certainly finding some fish with the deeper and we're also mapping the bottom of the, uh, of the lake. So quite impressed. The only thing I've noticed is the connection between the deeper and the phone can be a little bit temperamental. I've had to reboot the phone a couple of times just to clear it so that it will reconnect. I don't know why that is. I'm going to have a look at some blogs to see if there's any particular uh, remedies or, or other people have reported similar issues. A bit of a disaster. Just cast out, had a crack off. So having to go out in a boat to retrieve the deeper. Fortunately, it's quite a calm day. I think the next best thing is to upgrade the the braid and probably go for a 50 pound braid instead of a 25 pound braid. Once you've completed your scans, you can go back into the deeper app and you can analyze the scans either back at home or on the bank. As you can see in this particular one, there's a fish showing there at 0.86 meters and the down arrow indicates that's 0.86 meters from the bottom. If it was an up arrow, it would indicate that it was 0.86 meters from the surface of the lake. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen, you've got scans building up with different colors, different contours. If you get into deeper water, that you'll get different colours, you'll get blues, deeper blues. In this particular lake, the water isn't that deep. You can increase the size of the left-hand side screen so you can zoom in on your scans. And then you can touch different points on the lake, on the scan, so that you can see the different depths within the lake. And as you can see on this one, we've got depths varying from 0.8 metres to 1.7 metres at uh, various locations that I've scanned. You can then increase the right hand side of the screen and you can increase the speed of, that the scan displays at one times, five times or ten times speed and then you can drop it back to pause as different fish appear so that you can analyse where the fish were located. So we've completed some scans of this part of the lake, done some maps, spotted a few fish so now it's time to deploy the bushwhacker, get some bait out and see if we can catch something.